In this video, we're going to do some quick work examples of basic questions involving inequalities. Let's start off with a statement. The statement could be x is less than 4. So if we just think about this now, this number could be 3, it could be 2, it could be 1, it could be minus 10. We're looking for a number that's less than 4. If we have the statement x is going to be equal to or less than 4, the notation changes. So with this particular example, we could include 4. If we had now p is going to be greater than 6, we're looking for numbers larger than 6. So p could be 7, it could be 8, it could be 9, it could be a million. We can't include 6. If we had p was equal to or greater than 6, we would use the following notation. Some questions might ask us to state three integers, so three whole numbers, that satisfy this inequality. We could say 6, 7, 8, 10, 11 and 12. The only difference between these two here is that we can't include 6 in this particular list. This is what we call a strict inequality. Let's look at another one. We might have x is going to be strictly greater than 1 and in turn less than or equal to 4. So if we look at this one, we can choose numbers between 1 and 4. We can't include 1, but we could include 4. So if we were asked to state all of the whole numbers, which are integers, that satisfy this inequality, we'd have 2, 3 and 4. If we change this and we had now 1 included, we could add 1 to the list. Let's look at another example. We might have y is going to be greater than or equal to minus 1, and in turn y is going to be strictly less than 3. We might be asked to state two integer values, two whole numbers, that satisfy this inequality. We could, for example, have minus 1, we could have 1. We're just looking for numbers in between. So there's some basic notation and terminology. We could show these on a number line. If we have a strict inequality, we use an open dot. So what I'm going to do here is just draw up a number line. If I wanted to show this inequality on a number line, all I would do is go ahead and locate 4. I put 4 just here. I'd have an open dot as this is a strict inequality and it doesn't include 4 and I'd have all numbers now to the left. We can see the arrow is going to be pointing at the x, therefore it's all numbers now smaller than 4. So if I wanted to show this on a number line, I could do the following. If we looked at this one right here, the only difference is now I would have a solid dot. So I'd have exactly the same, but at 4 I'd have a closed dot as we can include 4 in our range of values that satisfy the inequality. So all I'm going to do is put this on, and that now would be the second one. x is less than or equal to 4. If we look at the next one, we've got p is going to be greater than 6. So in this particular case, all we would do, we'd probably get a new number line, I can put it on this one, I'd locate 6, I'd have an open dot, and then we're interested now in all values greater than 6. And we say it's strictly greater than 6. So we couldn't include 6. And we can go ahead and put that one on. If we had now the second of these two inequalities, we could include 6. So we'd have now a closed dot. And all we're interested in now are values greater than or equal to 6. So 6, 7, 8, 9, right the way up as far as you can count. So that now gives us the second of those two inequalities. So the notation, if we have an open dot, we can use this now for the strict inequalities. And if we have now the closed dot, we can have this with the inclusive inequalities. So this now is the equivalent notation. So if we wanted to do this one just here, what I'm going to do is draw up a new number line. We're going to have two dots this time. We're going to have one at one and the other at four. So I'm going to put one just here and I'm going to put one just here. We need an open dot at one. We need a closed dot at four 
and we're simply now going to represent the inequality by drawing a line between the two dots. So this now gives me the inequality that we have here, that x is going to be strictly greater than 1, yet in turn less than or equal to 4. OK, let's do this one for y. So we're going to have now on here two values. We're going to have minus 1 and 3. So let's go ahead and put these on a number line. Minus 1 is here. Let's put 3 just here. This time my closed dot is at minus 1, as we can include that value and then the open dot is at 3. We open that up and we can go ahead now and simply put on the line between the two. And that represents the inequality that y is less than or equal to minus 1, yet in turn, sorry, uh, less, uh, greater than or equal to minus 1, yet in turn strictly less than 3. So if we were asked now to state three integer values that satisfy this one, we could have 3 2, 1. If we wanted three integer values to satisfy this one, 4, then we might have now minus 1 and minus 10. We don't have to count consecutively downwards. We can have any numbers. P greater than 6, we could have 7, 8, 9. If we had P greater than or equal to 6, we could have 6, 10, 15. These are three whole numbers, integers. This one, three integers, we could have now 4, 3, and 2. We only have 3 on that one. With this one now, three integers, we could have 2, 1, and minus 1. So these are now integer values that satisfy the inequalities. What we're now going to do is look at solving inequalities. The techniques we use are very similar to solving equations. So for example, if I had 2x is going to be less than or equal to 8. To find now the value of x or the set of values of x, we would simply divide both sides by 2. So dividing both sides of the inequality by 2, we can say that x is less than or equal to 4. So if you wanted some integer values, if you ask for integer values, you can have 4, 3, 2, 1, and so on and so forth. So we would treat this in exactly the same way as we would look to solve an equation. So we've got now 2x is equal to 8. We know on that one we would simply divide both sides by the 2 and x would be equal to 4. So the techniques we're using are the same, although the statements are different. This says that these are equal, this does not. Okay, now in later units you will look, if you have now a negative quantity here and you divide an inequality or multiply an inequality by a negative number, the sign does change. In this particular video, we're not going to consider too many scenarios that are, are going to be much harder than this, but it is something that you need to consider if you're doing more work with inequalities. Let's look at another inequality. 3x minus 1 is going to be greater than 8. What we want to do now is find the values of x that satisfy this inequality. So if I had an equation, we would use the same technique. So we've got 3x minus 1 is equal to 8. We would add 1 to both sides of the equation. If I did that, I'd have 3x is equal to 9. I'd now divide both sides of the equation by 3, and we'd end up now with x is equal to 3. We use exactly the same technique here. We add 1 to both sides of the inequality. That gives me 3x is 9. We divide both sides of the inequality by 3. That's going to give me now that x is strictly greater than 3. OK, let's do another one. Let's say we had now uh, 4x plus 3 is less than or equal now to, let's go for 20. Uh, we'll go for 27. We would subtract 3 from both sides of the inequality. So subtracting 3, that's going to give me 4x is going to be less than or equal to 24. And then we would divide both sides by 4 and we would then get our statement. So dividing both sides by 4, x would be less than or equal to 6. If you were then asked for any integer values that satisfy that inequality, say you asked to find 3, you could go ahead and say 2, 1, minus 10. 
any values that satisfy that, you'd be asked to write down. Okay, let's look at another one. Let's say we've got uh, 5x minus 3 is going to be greater than or equal to 4x plus 2. We've got unknowns on both sides of the inequality. We would do exactly the same as if we were solving an equation. I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. If I do that, on the left-hand side of the inequality, I'm going to have 1x left. So I'll have x minus 3 will be greater than or equal to 2. I want x's on one side of the inequality, I want the numbers on the other, so I'm going to add 3 to both sides of the inequality, and that's going to give me that x is going to be greater than or equal to 5. If you want to check that, go ahead and substitute it in and see that it satisfies the inequality. So, there's some basic work with inequalities. We need to know the notation, which way round the arrows are going. We need to be able to find integer values that satisfy the inequalities. We sometimes might be asked to graph them. So if we've got a strict inequality, we use an open dot. If we've got an inclusive inequality, we use a closed dot. We consider which way the arrow is going. So if x is less than 4, we're interested in values lower than 4. If p is greater than 6, we're interested in values higher than 6. Then if we have now an inequality between two given values, we have the two dots and the line in between. You may also be asked to solve inequalities. Whilst these are not equations, we can use the same techniques by balancing the inequalities as such, um, although technically not correct, and then we go ahead and express x is greater than or equal to, or x is less than a certain number.